Today we've got a revenge story against some awful customers who refused to tip. We'll get to that in a bit, but first, revenge for a dead hog. This happened about five years ago to my cousin. To keep it short, a big pig was rummaging through the garden and messing with outdoor furniture at my cousin's house. So they did what rednecks do and shot it. Later found out it was a meth head, call her Cindy, neighbor's pet pig. Cindy was upset and not in a good space, so she robbed the house a few days after the first incident. Cindy got petty revenge and arrested. The pig itself was very big and came up onto the porch of the house. Actually got intimate with the furniture and potted plants. It was destroying a lot of the stuff on the porches and it wasn't backing down when they tried to scare it off either. So I'd say they had no choice but to do what they did. I'm sure some disagree. A few days later, the house was broken into. My cousin's coin jar and loose change were gone, along with my sister's safe, which had all of her private info in it. The safe was later found in a dumpster and led to the arrest of Cindy. I live in a high meth area and my cousin who I mentioned lives on the street in the area of the meth county. So needless to say, the neighbors in the area are not the kind you want to meet. Later on, I found out that she was sent to jail and her children were taken. Evidently, they were living in the classic trailer park meth house. No toilets, rotten floors, no water and so on. The officer that took her in ended up getting her some food before taking her in. And I'm told a video of this went viral, but I haven't seen it. I'm not gonna lie, in all the times that I've spent reading pro-revenge stories, you tend to hear a lot of similar stories. I gotta say, I've never read one quite like this before. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you enjoy awesome stories of revenge, why not hit that subscribe button down below? That said, our next story is, block the driveway? Fine, I'll block because I got nowhere to go. This happened yesterday. I, 30-something male, never will reveal my age, had a hard day at work and just left the gym with my roommate. As most of you know, going to the gym usually makes you hungry as heck, so I was already slightly cranky. We live in an apartment building in the city on a major street. Our building has two driveways, one in and one out. The clickers to open the garage will only open the indoors, and there's a button to open the outdoors inside the garage. So as we're about to pull up to the turn to get to the driveway, we see a huge black SUV blocking everything. Seeing this, I was definitely ticked because I was hungry and tired. Since I didn't know whose car that it was, I called my landlord to see if anyone had a car like that in the building. However, the landlord told me the person was chased off earlier for blocking the driveway. The landlord tried to have him towed, but technically since he was on public streets, the towing companies wouldn't touch it. Still wondering why, but whatever. They called the police earlier, but the person disappeared before the police got there. So I asked if I could call the non-emergency number to get the police to tow it away. He said, be my guest. So I'm halfway through dialing the number when it clicked that they said this was the second time today that this guy has done this. That's when I think the hanger became petty. I backed up my car and parked it three inches from the guy's driver's side and put my hazards on. Then called the police and waited. I knew the person wouldn't be able to move his car at all because his passenger side door was being blocked by a tree. We waited about 45 minutes for the police to show up. They asked me if I called the police and I replied yes. They asked me why I was parked so close and I explained the above. The cops burst out laughing and asked me to move up a bit so they could get the information. 10 minutes later, they came back to my car and said I was free to go, and a tow truck would be there in 20 minutes. Slow day, apparently. Apparently, this guy's plates didn't match the vehicle and the plates were expired. So that's three tickets and a tow. I pulled into the garage, up to my apartment, and smirked as I watched them pull away with his SUV on a tow truck, cooking all the while. Best tacos ever. This next story is, make me look bad to make yourself look good? I can play that game twice as well and steal the guy I don't even want. So for a quick bit of background info, I got super into astrology, crystal collecting, tarot cards, rune stones, paganism, modern witchcraft, vulture culture, etc. when I was about 19. At 21, a close friend, we'll call her Marcy, also started expressing interest in the occult. So I started sharing my knowledge and supplies with her. Anyway, so around that same time, Marcy had a crush on this absolute slimy jerk of a guy. 
She asked for my help to get him to like her. Not that she needed it, she's drop dead gorgeous. Has a perfect body, amazing fashion sense, super interesting personality, etc. So as much as I hated being the third wheel, I said sure. I'd come along and help hype her up and make her seem that much more amazing. Little did I know, her entire plan to make herself look good was to make me look bad. Apparently the guy thought witches were super hot and wanted to get with one, so Marcy used the scissor in. She starts rattling off everything I had taught her, but with a holier-than-thou air about her. She pulls out my tarot deck that I'd lent her so she could read his cards, making sure to throw a quick, maybe one day you can get your own deck too, my way. So the whole date goes on like this. She's passing my own knowledge and crystals and cards off as her own, all while claiming I know nothing and that she's taught me everything she knows. The real kicker was when she invented a coven she thought she was the priestess of and claimed I was a hopeful initiate, but that she had to confer with her deities as she wasn't sure I'd make the cut. I was livid. At no point had I agreed to let myself be belittled and demeaned and insulted just so she could spend the night with some idiot, womanizing tool. But I held my tongue through the evening. I let her look good. I let him be impressed by her vast knowledge of the occult. And I planned my revenge. This was over winter break in my junior year of college, so I was used to working like a maniac on projects. But I had nothing else to occupy me. I spent the next week and a half writing my own personal grimoire. I used one of those artisan-made journals with the thick, rough-edged paper that feels like it's handmade. I drew star charts, palm charts, astrological signs, crystals and their alignments, deities and their powers slash areas of jurisdictions. I mapped out the pagan calendar and detailed each of the holidays and what they were celebrating. I wrote spells. I wrote curses. I just went crazy. So when Marcy asked me to hang out with her and the jerk again, I was ready. He took us to some sleazy bar and bought us drinks. At some point I made an excuse to get up, at which point I accidentally knocked over my purse and whoops, my grimoire accidentally fell out of my bag and into his lap. He flipped through the book and was immediately hooked. For the rest of the evening, he only had eyes for me, only had questions for me only bought drinks for me. My friend was so mad, but what could I do? It was only an accident that my grimoire had fallen into his lap. She kept trying to get his attention back, but it was all in vain. He left the bar with me that night. I brought him back to my place, watched an episode of The Vampire Diaries, and sent him on his way. It was never about the guy to me. I just loathed being used as the butt of the joke, the antithesis of the picture of desirable. I think to some extent, Marcy understood. She never asked me to be her third wheel again. I mean, it's no surprise whether or not Marcy understood, she definitely understood that you stole the guy she was interested in. Whether or not she understood why exactly, I'm sure she would never invite you again. Our next story is Crab Leg Petty Revenge on a Bunch of Entitled Kids. This happened a number of years ago, but it's still a funny story we share. Our city had a Chinese buffet that served crab legs with melted butter on Sundays. One Sunday we were there for a leisurely lunch with a couple close work friends when a coworker from another department at our company came in with his wife, their kids, and a few of the kids' friends. There must have been at least half a dozen kids there that were all about ages 10 to 12. Every time a new pan of crab legs came out, the kids would run up and take all of them before anyone else could get there sometimes cutting in front of people. This happened at least three or four times until other diners started complaining and the workers told them they needed to stop the kids from doing that. The parents basically ignored the workers and the kids kept going back. Eventually they all left and we talked about how bad the kids were probably going to feel after eating that much crab and butter. The next day I overheard the coworker talking about how his kids and their friends were missing school because they all got really sick later that night and they had no idea why. Duh. Nice petty revenge win for the crab legs. I just wish there was more revenge in like some way that you got the kids to shut down their crab eating operations. Our next story is, I finally got some sleep. A few years back, I was working as a full time ski coach. What that meant for the week was I had to basically single-handedly put on a three-day event 
where people could buy and sell used ski and snowboard equipment, with the team getting a percentage cut of all sales. A ski swap, if you will. Setting up this event took all week, and while I had a lot of help, basically everything funneled through me. It was exhausting, but a lot of kids paid their team fees from fundraising events like this. The night before the event, I got home at about midnight. I had worked all day about 16 hours, and when I got to my bed, I could not wait to fall asleep for about 4 hours before opening day when I had to be at the top of my game to sell as much equipment as possible to benefit the team. My upstairs neighbor who I really did not know were incessantly pounding into the floor. I knew they had a few young kids and this had happened one time before, so I tapped on the ceiling with a broomstick. They weren't phased by this, which was a little confusing as it worked before. Nothing major, just a hey, trying to sleep here. You couldn't really hear them walking or anything regularly. And a little noise is to be expected, but this was not that. I'm a young guy and typically stay up pretty late, so it's never really been an issue if they're kind of loud. But this sounded like a 200 pound man jumping off the counter type of banging. I tried to sleep, even put in earplugs, but this was shaking the building. After I had enough and it was about 1.30 a.m. on a Wednesday, by the way, I grabbed a big long wooden ski and pounded the ceiling three or four times. Without skipping a beat, they pounded back and then continued whatever activity they were doing that quite literally had art on my wall noticeably vibrating. I did it again and they returned with a bang 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 onto their floor, my ceiling. My roommate at the time worked nights, so I was home alone. I had a decent stereo system in the closet so I hooked it all up and turned on an 8 hour excision playlist at full volume with the speakers pointed towards the ceiling, one of them on top of my kitchen cabinets. If you don't know what excision is, think grinding metal dubstep sounds. It's kind of disorienting for someone who doesn't regularly listen to that kind of stuff. At that point, I knew I only had a couple hours to sleep, if at all anyway, so I left. Went to a friend's house and crashed for a few minutes and then went to work. The speakers blared at full volume until about 7am when my roommate got home. I didn't really want to be that petty, but it was so rude that late at night to pound back into the floor that I had enough. Never again did we have any issues with the noise. This is just one big one-up game to find who's gonna stop first. Our next story is still graduated, all that matters. This happened 20 plus years ago. My senior year government teacher hated me and my two best friends for some unknown reason. We weren't the popular kids, band geeks is the only reason I can think. If the popular kids laughed and talked about the party last night, she said nothing. If we whispered to each other on a project that we were allowed to work together on, we would get yelled at. So I started taking her word to a T. My seat was the very first left seat in the room. It was a large class so I was maybe two feet from the board. She liked to walk around the room when she taught too, so I would turn in my seat to follow her and pay attention. Turn around, face the front, she'd yell. So I'd turn around and face the front. Why aren't you listening to me? You have to look at me to listen. So I would turn in my seat to look at her. Turn around, face the front, wash, rinse, repeat multiple times. Finally, she kicked me out of class. Principal asks why I got kicked out. I followed directions. I got sent back to class. More of the same ensued for the rest of the school year. Final day of classes comes around. She pulls me aside and says, I have good news and bad news. You failed your final, but I gave you a D in the class. I don't ever want to see you again. I still got to graduate. Later in the summer, right before the next year started but kids knew their class, I was at the school visiting a teacher that I did like. I made sure to stop by that classroom of the above teacher. She was less than thrilled to see me and rudely asked, what do you want? Without a beat, I said, just wanted to let you know, my little brother's in your class this year, and oh, by the way, he's got a different last, and if you think I'm horrible, I let the statement fade and I evilly laughed and walked away. Sure, it wasn't my actual brother, hence the different last name, but another friend's brother, who was a walking nightmare. This next story is, gave me a bad grade for nothing? I got you. The supreme art of war is to subdue the enemy without fighting. Sun Tzu A while back, when I was in high school, my school was having a wave of teacher layoffs. Don't ask me why, nobody knew. Well, my science teacher left and another one came in. Let's call her Alexandra. I'm going to be honest, she seemed cool at first, but looks can be deceiving. 
Okay, let's get straight to the point. She passed a huge book for us to read and summarize it. She would grade it for dedication, effort, writing, and the full summary itself. I was inspired, and I'll be honest, I don't think I've ever worked so hard on a resume slash school assignment before. It was worth half my semester grade if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, I handed her the summary. Passed one week, and the day came for her to hand them back. I could hear all my classmates screaming happiness with a grades when they got their work back. I was excited. Then I hear my name being called by her, but it was different than expected. Chris, can we talk privately? Huh? That was my reaction. Anyway, we left the room and I get the bad news that I got a D. I was shocked. Never in my life had I received a grade like that. My heart was pumping a mile a minute. Teacher, but what's wrong with my essay? Your writing is trash. If you can't write well, then go back to elementary school. Okay, I got you. I'll be honest, I wanted to punch her. I was pretty sure my resume wasn't crap like she said. And calling my writing trash? What the freak? But I decided to keep my composure, apologize, and leave the place. On the way back home, I had the idea to take my old science teacher to check the work and see if it was bad like Alexandra said. And guess what? He said it was spotless and it was a straight-A job. Now I was pissed. If I didn't do anything about it, there's people that would suffer because of her too. I told everything to my father, since I don't have authority over school, etc., who was also pissed. He scheduled a meeting with the school to discuss the issue. They got together in a room, including Alexandra, to talk about it and how the teacher was totally irresponsible in grading my work. I could hear the screams in the room. Basically, Alexandra was trying to defend herself from the accusations, saying that what she did was completely fair regarding my essay. And what about calling my son's writing trash? What do you have to say about that? My dad asked her. As expected, she was out of words in there. School dudes, director, staff in general were trying to calm down the situation, but there was no escape for her. Approximately an hour had passed, and all I could see is Alexandra leaving the room with a hateful look at me. Guess what happened? She was fired shortly after the meeting ended due to incompetence at work. In this case, revenge was very, very welcome and tasty, and I don't regret anything. I mean, just the act of her saying that your writing is trash alone I think is an almost fireable offense. You don't say that to kids. A lot of kids who honestly don't do well in class, they probably have real life issues going on at home. Imagine a teacher says, oh, your writing is trash, to somebody whose life is probably already hard enough as it is. This next story is, copy from me at your own risk. Another bully post a few days ago spurred this memory. In fourth grade, I sat beside a girl who was a mean bully, and she always cheated and copied my answers on tests. Not like in a sympathetic kind of way, but always rubbing it in my face like a power trip like there was nothing I could do to stop her. I, of course, first tried being a good girl and tried to get help from the teacher, but the teacher ignored it and said she didn't see it happen so she couldn't do anything about it. So I decided, fine, I'll just fix it myself. On the next exam, I went through and purposely chose all incorrect answers. Every last one. She jumped up to turn her paper in, and I quickly changed all my answers before turning mine in. When the scores came back, she had a zero and I had a perfect score. She was so mad she put her head down and cried, and I was all sing-song fake kindness. Oh no, what's wrong? Didn't you do well on the test? That's so awful, bless your heart. It was such a jerk move, but man, it felt good. I mean, it's one thing if you're willing to let somebody copy your answers. But somebody who relentlessly does it and teases you because you can't do anything about it? Well, that's just satisfying. Our next story is, my thighs are too big? Okay, you can't do math. I was reminded of this yesterday. Years ago, I was in a rut and I dated someone I knew I shouldn't. I knew because he was dumb. I mean, like the kind of dumb that gets angry when they don't know something. He misspelled his own nickname on a tattoo and tried to tell people it was on purpose. Yes, I was rebounding hard. We met through a mutual friend who should have warned me about his anger issues, to be fair, but she didn't. She only ever played Magic the Gathering with the dude, so I talked to him for about a week on the phone for hours a day. 
even help him through a small panic attack, which is easy for me. He invited me to a barbecue in town that weekend. Everything went so well that I went back to his place and spent the night. Cuddling only, all clothes on. This is important. Next day, he just whips himself out like no warning. And here's where I, as the presumed handler, should have received a warning. Dude had a micro, you know what. I mean, it was like a third thumb down there. This was my second time running into this though with men, and obviously it's not something they can control. So it's not like I said anything. I flinched though. It was surprise, I'm sorry. From that moment on, he never forgave me. Didn't matter what I did, no matter how I tried to please or pleasure him, I was a jerk because I flinched. Even when he would yell at me about it, I would never say anything about the size. I just said a version of the truth. Seeing that for the first time surprised me because he didn't tell me he was whipping it out. Well, only two weeks of this go by, and finally he wants to try and actually hook up, which I admit, I had avoided. I'm fat, and I already have my own insecurities about my body, and this was a new person, but we had done darn near everything else, so we tried. Guy couldn't get past my thighs, starts yelling about how my thighs are too big. Somehow I stay a few more days and don't leave, until this fool manages to tear slash pop the muscle off my right forearm bone from not letting me go. I leave, yelling at him that basic freaking math said he knew how big my thighs were when we met, but I didn't know how big his you-know-what was, only he knew the value of X. That crap was an unknown variable to me. Later when my mother, yes, my own mother, found out about my arm, I also mentioned what caused the argument. I had to stop her from being violent towards him because she was furious. However, I didn't stop her plan B, which was to go to Spencer's Gifts in the mall, buy these stupid freaking baby-sized condoms, and mail them to him anonymously with no return address, which she did. I never heard from him again. This next story is, neighbor won't even face in my direction, so I made sure he's the one feeling left out. Met my next door neighbor the day we moved into a rental house. It's a nice neighborhood, so I can only imagine having a rental property isn't popular. I figured that going in, and planned to go out of our way to be good, responsible, and quiet neighbors, and to make friends if we could. We complimented their freshly laid sod, which was being put in by landscapers, while we chatted. It was clearly a big deal to him about how we talked about his yard. Two days later, I accidentally rolled onto the edge of his grass while trying to back out and return our moving truck. It bunched up a piece of sod, but did virtually no damage. Didn't even create a divot in the dirt. Before I was even out of the truck, he screamed something and slammed the door behind him. I knocked until he answered, admitted the error, and offered to pay the landscaping bill to have it repaired. Even though simply pushing the sod back into place and adding some water would have made it good as new. He said he would send me the bill and shut the door in my face. No bill, because, surprise, there was no damage, but nonetheless, he started treating us like we ran over his grandmother. Not only does he refuse to talk to us, he'll even go as far as turning 180 so to not face in our direction if we drive by. Ridiculous. Now honestly, he's putting in way more effort to avoid us than we even care about his approval in the first place. So, really, joke's on him to begin with, but it's about the principle of the thing. Cue petty revenge. When we first met, he had said Halloween was a big deal in our neighborhood. I bought king-sized candy bars just in the chance he'd be told or hear how great our house was for having them. I made Christmas gifts for three neighbors on both sides, and these guys to be polite, and delivered them to introduce ourselves. Then we've had every one of our other neighbors over for dinner. It's a very close neighborhood, so when they inevitably talk about us, it'll always be brought up how we had them over, just a matter of time before you'll have to explain why. I also befriended his wife, and now we go on dog walks together every week. Since I had a group chat to give them both my number when we moved in, I use it to coordinate when we're meeting. He may not have anything to do with us directly, but I'll be darned if it's not going to be as difficult as possible for him. I've got big plans for a neighborhood barbecue this summer. That should really be a riot. Everybody makes mistakes. You went out of your way to go right up to their door and try to be honest, try to be accommodating and apologize. That dude's too stuck up on his high horse. 
I probably would have been frustrated, but I would have calmed down immediately if somebody was like legitimately apologetic like that. Our next story is, customers had the audacity to ask for a free birthday dessert after not tipping me. I'm a server at a restaurant with crappy clientele, and today a family of three came in, mom, dad, and four-ish year old son. I offered the parents cocktails and appetizers, like normal in order to hit my sales goals. They declined, but then for whatever reason, after they ordered their food, they left their son alone at the table so they could get drinks at the bar top. This isn't normal by the way, normally servers bring the drinks to the guests. I asked the bartender if they tipped well on their drinks after they returned to their seats. They both got two double shot mixed drinks, and I've noticed bartenders get tipped slightly better than servers for whatever reason, so I was expecting to get maybe slightly lower percentage of what they gave him, but he said they didn't tip him at all. So now I'm in a worrisome mood. I still have half of my service duties to provide for them, and I might be losing out on money on them. Since it wasn't busy, I decided to still quickly get them their things as quickly as possible, because they might have just been wanting to tip once for their meal or whatever. Pure hopium. After they pay, they didn't tip, so I didn't even bother with asking if they needed anything else like boxes or drinks to go. But as I was going to tend to my other tables, they stop me and say that it's the mom's birthday and if they could have our free birthday dessert. I decided that I wasn't going to lose all dignity and be a pushover and give them what they want, especially because I hate singing happy birthday to guests for many reasons. So I told them I'd let our dessert cook know and I'll have it right out for them. However, I did not let our dessert cook know I needed a birthday dessert for them. I simply helped all my other tables and watched this particular table slowly become less and less excited with anticipation of their free chocolate cake and ice cream. I reassured them it would be out shortly, as many times as I could, before they left empty handed after they got the hint. I think this just highlights that tipping culture sucks in a way. It just always blows my mind to know that you can be working for $2.13 an hour in some places because you have the chance of getting tips. And those places where you're working for $2.13 an hour are definitely not going to be the places where you get a decent tip most of the time. Some real cheapo places for sure. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another absolutely awesome revenge story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.